So what is good leadership? And what makes the difference between good chairmanship and a good general manager? Mr. Stefan Garelli, welcome to the MKB yeah. Leadership Show. Please tell us in two minutes, please introduce yourself. Who am I? Good question. Yes. I'm a professor of competitiveness at IMD, the business school in Lausanne at the University of Lausanne. I started by being uh, the managing director of the World Economic Forum, the annual meeting in Davos. I've been working in many companies, Hewlett Packard, etc. I have been a chairman of a bank, the Sandoz Financial Holdings. I'm today chairman of a newspaper, Le Temps. I'm a member of the International Olympic Commission. I even have been elected one day at the Constitutional Assembly of my country. So, um, a very diverse experience. Extensive experience. So tell us, you also uh, created the center, EMD's World Competitive Center. Yes, we, we founded that about uh, 25 years ago because um, when I was doing Davos, I realized that everybody was speaking about competitiveness of enterprises, but nobody was speaking really about competitiveness of nations. Or when they were speaking about it, everybody had a different definition. So we felt maybe we should compare how countries are competing in this way. So tell us, how do you define good leadership? You teach at EMD, at yeah. executive courses. You're constantly teaching aussi à l'école, à l'Université de Lausanne. What would you tell these students? What is good leadership? I have looked at your videos here before, and I think everybody had a good definition about yeah. uh, leadership. You know, it's energy, it's passion. Uh, I have another one, which is a good leader creates followers. And, uh, you know, this is something important. I have seen in my life so many of these leaders alone, you know, coming in front of everybody and saying, you know, I'm leading and everybody saying, you know, congratulations, goodbye, tell us if it works, you know, they are alone. And I think the real function of a leader is to take people with you and to make sure that they share your passion, that they share your vision. And that's not as easy as uh, it seems because a lot of those leaders in companies, sometimes in government, we see it today, are completely alone. There is nobody behind them. And I think this is one of the biggest challenge of leadership today, making sure that people are coming with you. And also, you've been chairman of boards, as you mentioned, and also you've been managing director of uh, the World Economic Forum. Tell us what you, for you is the difference between being a chairman and a CEO or a managing director? When you are a chairman, you are a little bit like the spare wheel in your car. People take care about you only when things go wrong. I'm sure you don't know where is your spare wheel until you have a problem. And I think this is exactly what's happening. I think when everything goes fine, the life of a chairman is really very nice. And when things go a little bit less fine, everybody turn around to you and ask you for solutions. And I think that's where you have to be very careful because the CEO of a company is taking action, is responsible for the management. The chairman is responsible for controlling that everything is done correctly with a sense of ethics and according to the law. This is very important. It's becoming even more important today where transparency is the name of the game and the rules of the games are changing. So the chairman is getting more and more important in today's role. Quite a big change. Yes, indeed. So in your career, what was the biggest influencer or a person that influenced you? Well, when I was uh, managing director of uh, the World Economic Forum, of course, you meet a lot of those uh, great people of around the world and um, many have powers, very little have influence on you. I, I worked a lot with a French Prime Minister called Raymond Barre. Uh, he was a fabulous person. I learned a lot from him. What kind of things did you learn from him? Uh, I learned the same thing as I learned from another one called Ted Heath, you know, the British Prime Minister. He was the best speaker I've ever heard. And one day I told him, you know, what is the secret? Tell me, tell me the secret. He told me, Stefan, this is very simple. Don't make a speech, speak to people. Mm. And if you speak to people, you can make as many mistakes as you want. If they feel you communicate to them, if they feel you are not reading something which was written by somebody else, you can make every mistake in the world. You have this kind of special relationship and everything will go fine. It's probably was the best advice I ever got. Uh, what was your biggest challenge, your biggest failure, and how did you overcome it? I think one of the things I always tell my students, because I experience it, I think that in life you should be committed, you should be loyal, ethical to the job you have, but never forget your personal agenda. It's fair enough to have a personal agenda, it's fair enough to know where you want to go in life, 
do it honestly. But sometimes we have jobs which are so interesting, so passionate, that you, want, you see only the job. And actually, you should always think, what is my next step? Where do I go from here? And sometimes I say you feel yourself, it's a bit like you're at the top of a pyramid. You're at the top of a pyramid, you cannot go upward, you cannot go on the side. The only way is to go down again to climb, to climb up another pyramid, even higher. This takes a lot of courage. And I think you have to have the courage sometimes to climb down the pyramid to go to another one. I feel that the biggest mistake, your question, was yes. probably that sometimes I stayed in job which I liked too much and I didn't think enough about my personal agenda and what was the next step. Always think about the next step. A leader is somebody who has a sense of direction. A leader is somebody where you feel he knows where he's going. So my first advice that is if you don't know where you are going, don't tell it. If you are a leader, keep it for yourself. Pretend. Decide until you find out. Now you've written a book, Are You a Tiger, a Cat or a Dinosaur? Yes. Right? Yes. So what are the key messages in your book? I was afraid you would ask me if I was a tiger, a cat or a dinosaur myself. <laughs> that would come next. <laughs> uh, it's 100 questions about how competitive influence our life. I've written a lot of things which are academic and profoundly boring on competitiveness. Mm -hmm. And I felt, you know, I should show people, you know, it has an impact on our life. It has an impact on the way we behave, uh, on the way companies, you know, treat us. And this is what I have done. So 100 questions, two pages, very simple to read, uh, touching a lot of issues, leadership, since we have discussed it, but also issues about uh, what are the products, what can you expect from a product, uh, issues about failures, not failures. It's a bit about everything. So um, it's a kind of thing to show you know, economics is part of our daily life. So what habit do you have that um, has really helped you be at the success that you are? Ah, uh, there are a few of them. Uh, the first one is to um, not to read anything about economics after nine o'clock at night. I think it's important. I, I felt that if I was reading about economics first, I would not sleep. You know, I would start thinking and thinking. And second, I deeply believe that if you want to be good at what you are doing, you should have the curiosity to look at other things. So you should read about whatever please you, but not your, your trade, not what you are doing yourself during all the day. It's very good because this lateral thinking will make you discover new idea, new thing. And sometimes you say, well, it works there. Maybe it can work here. So a lot of the ideas which sometimes I felt were worthwhile, actually I got them not from economics, but from elsewhere. So it's good brainstorming. And it's brainstorming. It's being exposed to something different. What I call the ha-ha effect. Aha, I didn't think about that. You know, I am exposed to a totally different idea in anthropology and suddenly it works also in business. And this is very important. Thank you very much, Mr. Stefan Garelli, for your sharing your knowledge and your experience. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the MKB Leadership Show done in conjunction with Dukas Kopi TV. I'm your host, Katrina Burus, and stay tuned for future episodes. And I hope this show has brought your leadership one step closer to excelling.